So if remembering was dangerous, integrating was dangerous, and then you ended up not um, building the muscle to integrate, and you didn't have other people to help you remember, you didn't have ceremonies to remember to remember, then you just don't know how to do it by absence. And you have a, a pattern that when stuff comes up to try to get remembered, you have to fragment it through alcohol, distraction, psychedelics, getting into a fight with somebody, all these different strategies to, to break the memory, to not to stop the integration. Hmm. A lot of healing is assuming that you have to do work to remember. What if the issue is that we have tons of autopilot programs that are forgetting, that are making sure you don't remember? That's more of the problem, not that you have to do extra work. Mm -hmm. The work needs to be to highlight some of these programs, highlight some of these inverted trickster energies. So Holly leaked out that she admitted when she's get triggered, she corrects somebody. And when she corrects someone, she forgets her trigger. So that's a trickster to trick her mind to not remember that there's something coming up. Something's coming up, got to attack the mm. person who brings it up. If I find someone to attack, then I don't remember what's coming up. Yeah, skirt around. So Holly is a role model, or her trickster energy is a good role model that opened up some extra uh, insight for me to, to work with this trickster energy. I played with the idea of Peekaboo, which was a spinoff of the hiding behind the bleachers rock, throw, throwing rocks oh. metaphor. <laughs> so we're sensing the trickster play the stuff, but her, her overt voice, her god voice is a superego. So we're we're noticing the superego energy, but we're not really paying attention to the trickster part. Maybe the trickster part is the missing element. But it's tricky. And it's slippery, and it skirts around stuff. So how do we counter the trickster spark, the trickster? Well, meeting the trickster head-on doesn't do anything. Yes. Seems like wasted the energy. Trickster will <laughs> skirt around it. Mm-hmm. That trickster can work with head on collisions. And scaring her didn't work either. What did work? Oh. I know can the trickster did. be scared? Why would the trickster be scared? How would you scare the trickster? Wouldn't the trickster be happy that you're scared? Yeah, it gets a lot of energy. Yeah. That was my confusion. Holly's trigger triggers adrenaline. Yeah. Kurt's trigger was adrenaline. He flood the room. I'm like, oh, what is this weird trigger <laughs> that gets people to jump in the middle of the chaos and be excited or have energy to do that to do that? Because I I can't relate to that. I'll, I'll jump on the side and eat some popcorn in the, in the middle of chaos, but I won't jump in the middle. I mean, that. <laughs> Why would I ruin a perfectly good train wreck by jumping in the middle of it? <laughs> but people with trickster energy that maybe is repressed, 
they don't have an outlet for tri trickster energy by having Zoom groups and other stuff, in-person groups, to, to dump their trickster energy. They need a chaotic environment to jump in the middle of it, and then they get a surge of energy and uh, act it up. So what if this trickster glee, this duper's delight, is like a, a big high? And then we're trying to ruin the fun of that trickster energy without offering an alternative. What if this trickster glee, this trickster connection is the only way that that self-isolated, fragmented, whatever, uh, dissociative amnesia people, that's their only way of connection. That's their only way of secure connection. So if we want to counter this energy, we need to offer the trickster some other form of creative expression. So who's following, who's lost? So play along with the trickster? Or uh, uh, gradually offer another? I don't know. There's no proof that I wasn't telling the truth. There's no proof that I wasn't telling the truth. How do you play along with that? Am I dumping my anger on you? Am I dumping my anger on you? Am I dumping my anger on you? Don't get upset. Don't get upset. Don't get upset. Don't get upset. I know when I'm lying. I know when I'm lying. I know when I'm lying. How do you play along with that? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I have the urge to go into sarcasm right away, which is not helpful. No, it's helpful, but it's it's fueling the tricks. Right, yeah. Directly. But it's letting it lead. So mm -hmm. you got to learn how to redirect the trickster so that you're collaborating with it mm -hmm. or guiding it to some better uh, form of connection. If you're helping, if you're following it, then you're following it to amnesia or projection or any other number of denial, splitting, early defenses. So let's go back to the early um, Holly and Chantal back and forth from. 2021 or 2022? 2022, November, because I made all this, I made tons of work to edit it. So. It was destructive to me. <laughs> I think it, it is might be slow. but it's destructive for a purpose. It is. Because you have to destroy something yeah. to make yeah. it new. Creation. So part of the trickster energy in the ideal is the trickster energy helps destroy. But the trickster energy perverted or redirected inward helps destroy memories. It helps destroy connection. And then the superego, the toxic superego is stuck going, how do I get connection? <laughs> Why am I losing? <laughs> It, the superego ends up having more self hame and punitive stuff that John Bradshaw give you tips to deal with. <laughs> but it's your trickster energy, or what if it's your trickster energy that's self-destroying the connection? Because it doesn't trust. Or maybe not even because it doesn't trust, because it's bored. <laughs> it needs something to, to destroy. It needs something to wrestle with. And if you aren't giving your trickster energy something to to play with it'll fuck with your life it'll fuck with your connections we think the littles just need parenting maybe the littles just need something to beat on or chop on or to wrestle with maybe they need a puppy and so they constantly say i want a puppy i want a dog i want a dog yeah <laughs> Some littles and young people just need energy, so a dog will have extra energy and that will counter the, all that running around. 
It requires destruction, yeah. It was destructive to me. <laughs> Creation requires destruction. In the... It was destructive to her. Now, you, the trickster energy is to laugh afterwards. Yeah. Creation requires destruction, yeah. It was destructive to me. <laughs> Creation requires destruction. So the trickster glee is like these little leaks that you aren't going to catch in real time because you're going to focus on the content. And you're going to focus on the content yourself when you're outraged. Your trickster will come out sideways or you'll have some duper's delight. Tongue, tongue shots and stuff. You're actually getting libido by having a fight. And then you have your super ego that judges. Oh, fights are bad. Why are fights bad? They're intimate, they're passionate, they're messy, they're good stories. Why do you not want good stories? There's nothing like a good embarrassing story to bond you with your friends. Like, oh, this happened. <laughs> Look how embarrassing my life is. And they go, yay, Deef, you have a <laughs> fucked up life. It's... But the safetyism is that, no, don't destroy me. I wasn't wrong. It wasn't me. It's because of this, 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 and this. So where's the destruction for there to be creation? And then how are you going to get fucked? It was destructive to me. I wanted to destroy the dishonesty so there would be realness so yes. I can connect. That's my aim. So the long-term goal that Chantal is sharing is I want realness. What's the medium that she's working to get to realness? Destroy the dishonesty. So it's trickster versus trickster energy. And who's going to win? The better trickster. That's what it makes so sense. So if I'm in denial, if it's not dishonesty, if it's denial. <laughs> so if I'm in denial, it's not dishonesty. It's denial. It might be also dishonesty, but let me just throw in two words and say they're different. How are you pulling me out of denial by attacking? How are you pulling me out of denial? That's what it makes so sense. So if I'm in denial, if it's not dishonesty, if it's denial, how are you pulling me out of denial by attacking? Hear the trick? <laughs> how are you pulling me out of denial? What is it? <laughs> by attacking me? Pulling me out of denial by attacking me. So that's a zigzag, how are you pulling me out of denial by attacking me? Chantal made a plea saying, I'm destroying you, your dishonesty to get honesty. Was, was that the earlier plea? Because I was, I'm on tequila, so. and it's mixed with Pepsi. So. And I listened to Alan in person, so I'm a bit flooded by uh, anxiety and confusion. How are you pulling me out of denial by attacking me? Where is the trick in this nonsense statement? <laughs> or what are the tricks in this nonsense statement? Do you see some of the agency being dumped? Chantal wants honesty. Realness. Honesty. Realness. Yeah. That's reframed as how are you pulling me out of denial? Mm -hmm. Is that the same message? No. How are you pulling me out of denial is like, is there any agency at Holly for wanting to be honest? No, she's None. flipping. She's flipping. Like she's making lying into denial. Like denial, she, it, it just happens to her. There's no agency. Well, denial just happens to her, and denial could be denial of 
Chantal. Denial yeah. can be denial of your request for connection. Yeah, that is. I so she's that. making a choice to say, fuck you, Chantal. And then she says, Chantal, how are you pulling me out of my fuck you, Chantal? Isn't yeah. that a bit of a double bind? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and then with and this then double also... bind of saying, I'm saying yeah. fuck you, Chantal. <laughs> how are you pulling me out of my denial of saying fuck you? And then you're like, why are you attacking me? So not only is she giving you a double bind of saying, I have the agency to say fuck you. <laughs> How are you pulling me out of my ability to deny you? And then she's like, why the fuck are you attacking me? <laughs> yeah, and she's punishing me. Well, just equating destroying the dishonesty with the, the dishonesty with attacking her. Just so. I, she, that's what I said from the start, that she's always playing this innocent card. Yeah, but that's you're using outrage against her denial. She can always deny back. She can yeah. always reject you. The trickster can always keep another trick. If you're going to try to use punitive superego stuff on a trickster, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This statement is a double bind because one is dumping the agency that she has full ability to constantly negate and deny. And she's like, well, how are you pulling me out of not denial? We can't pull her out of denial. No one else can pull someone out of denial. We can uh, persuade someone to try to get out of denial, but the she's making an exaggerated statement. This exaggerated statement is a trick. There's no way you can pull someone out of denial. Then she's giving a little bait, like, oh, if you stop attacking me, maybe there's a chance you could pull me out of denial. This is nonsense. <laughs> this is an amazing trick. This is trickster, trickster glee. If you fall into this frame, there's no way out. And the trickster is happy because that's what the trickster wants. You can't do a timeout in real life battles. <laughs> you can say, "Well, wait, <laughs> that's not logically coherent. That's that's unfair statement. That's uh, there's something off." <laughs> it's only because we have video and we can revisit the video and we can try to talk it out. We can try to catch the trickster stuff. But in real time, trickster is faster than our cognitive brains. And she'll brag about it. I learned to skirt around shit. I learned to skirt around shit. I learned to skirt around shit. Keep you chasing. But even if you're chasing, you can't stop somebody from denial. You can describe it. You can try to untrick the trickery. But you can't use a punitive superego strategy against a trickster. It just doesn't work. Counterwill, trickster, and schizoid uh, side is the opposite of superego. These are two parts that all of us have. And then for some of us, we have a punitive superego that quashes our trickster energy. So it has, it's a bit hubris. It has a bit of, of an ego. So it thinks you can quash other people's trickster energy. Except somebody else you can't physically strangle. So you can't really quash their trickster energy. So unless you're willing to get into some sort of biological punishment of other people, their trickster energy is, uh, is impervious. I'm all for tor torture, but on Zoom we can't. I don't have a technique to throw shoes at people. I am looking for ways to punish John or Holly or these other people that are attacking, but I haven't figured out the online way of physically punishing people. So the landscape of trickster is if people are tricking, the way out is spotting the trick. Then you at least stop wasting energy on a on a trick that's just a waste of time. For you, the trickster is getting glee because the trickster is taking up space. The trickster is 
fragmenting the memory. The trickster is getting the, its agenda done. And maybe by working with other people's trickster energy, then you can work with your own trickster energy that that sabotages remembering stuff. Because <clears throat> earlier Kelly was like, oh, I got an insight. And then I was dysregulating and I drank and I'm going to judge myself for drinking. Well, if you drank and the trickster was was the cause, uh, you're, you judging yourself isn't going to do anything. No. <laughs> You need to give the trickster some better supply, so the trickster will play over here, and then the memories will get integrated. It's tricky. So Holly's throwing in this plea, how are you pulling out of my denial? So re she reframed dishonesty to denial. And then now she's making a judgment. How dare you, Chantal, attack me? And this is a good video because she complained later that she had nightmares about Chantal's attack. So Chantal was able to land something. Mm. And somehow we didn't map that out. So now maybe by watching this, we'll be able to map it out. So if Holly ever comes back, we can, we can throw some of those bombs. It was destructive to me. Destructive to me. I don't understand denial and denial means to me that you don't want to see it but dishonesty is like you're throwing in things when you're aware of it see Chantal's pretty good she's calling out the trickster <laughs> She doesn't fully have the language, but she recognizes that dishonesty is throwing out noise. It's the trickster energy. But I think she's a bit, think she's underestimating the energy of dishonesty and trickster. But all of us are. I did too, so. Because that's the trickster hides, and the trickster uh, isn't like posturing, so the trickster is always trying to surprise you and surprise everybody else. So it's always going to look like. Uh, easier target to defeat, but it is probably the opposite. It's a very resilient energy that you can't really defeat. You can redirect into a better supply. That's tonight's argument. I mean, you cannot be dishonest. So you're assuming it's dishonesty. <laughs> You see how fast she gave an answer? What was that? So you're assuming it's dishonesty. <laughs> What's to assume? <laughs> it doesn't matter what she's assuming. She's pointing to a phenomena. <laughs> Whether she's pointing to it with the right word or the wrong word doesn't matter. But now she's switching the energy. Like, oh, your pointer is wrong and maybe your assumption is wrong. Is it a dominant framing? Uh, well, she's in her dominant frame, yeah. But she's trying to sabotage somebody else's frame, which is an easier argument. She's not making any assertions. So you can say, how do you know that? Easy counter. Maybe the better energy here is like going, Holly's triggered. Can Chantal redirect and circle back to the trigger? That's hard to stay on the attack when you when you have leverage. Trump yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to stay in frame. Well, no, you're you want to stay on the attack of the person whose whose frame is exposed. Redirecting it, yeah. Fuck your frame. If you're in a fight, survival to survival, and somebody else is exposed and they're retreating and desperate, that's the time to lean into their weakness and and pound them to death. That's what Trump tried to do with Biden. I think I describe it as hammer time in my uh, three-step thing. So you keep positioning, and then once you get the weekend, once you get the opening, you got to take it. 
if you don't take it, they cover up, and you gotta you gotta battle back and forth until you get another, another opening. That's just. But maybe tonight we're throwing in the angle of trickster, so maybe you don't need the hammer tongue. Maybe you just need to recognize the trickster, feed the trickster, and the trickster goes away. The trickster is amoral. So the trickster doesn't even probably care about the person they're defending. The trickster just wants to have some fun. The trickster is like uh, uh, the, the Two-Face or the Joker. The Joker in Batman, the Christian Bale one. So. <laughs> he just wants to cause chaos. So if you give him chaos somewhere else, <laughs> they'll go to the greater chaos because the trickster wants glee. So then, instead of trying to beat up the trickster, what if you can just send it to a new chaos thing and then your city's safe? Join the trickster in amorality and just stop trying to save the world. Send the trickster somewhere else. Trickster versus uh, super ego, trickster wins. This is a hard sale, a hard sell tonight. Even like the uh, uh, the schizophrenic superego, Ravella, what's her name? Ravella. That's her last name, right? No, that's her no, first Levine. name. No, Levine. Ravella, Levine. Levine. Of Levine, yes. Her tactic was to separate the superego, the schizophrenic superego, then attack it. <laughs> and then, but you have to separate the superego, then you have to be with the person's littles, and then you're joining their littles, and then you attack their toxic superego. This is an add on strategy that you have to recognize the trickster part. You recognize the trickster spark and then address the littles, then the superego has less energy. Because the superego, and if the superego, the schizophrenic superego and the trickster are working together. So oceanic merge with the, the littles will get you to the toxic superego. Yeah, if you oceanic merge with the littles and you oceanic merge with the littles, Getting finally getting a voice, finally getting yes. space by be playing trickster, and you let the littles play somewhere else, or you give the trickster something positive, some candy, in a in a black van that goes somewhere, but don't be a pedophile, or maybe be a pedophile, I don't know, whatever it takes to get the trickster distracted. I'm drinking tequila with Pepsi, so the metaphors aren't the perfect thing. These are just metaphors. I do not have pedo history because I'm too lazy. And, and children don't seem that sexually enticing. And, and sex is so much work. So. My pitiful sexual history. So, trickster energy. <laughs> right now we're fighting superego and trickster together. We address the trickster, then the superego is sort of out of ammunition. Then you don't need to be, or then maybe the superego, the schizophrenic superego is easier to battle. It's a theory. Maybe no one else is covering it. Maybe some people are, are. A lot of people are covering self-deception, but a self-deception is covered by trickster energy. It's a waste of time. And there's ways to get through the self-deception through ego death, psychedelics, uh, 
therapies, whatever, to try to see through the lies. But people keep doing that, so it's not, that's not a very efficient strategy. So how are you pulling me out of my denial by attacking me? Yeah, I'm absolutely feeling that. And maybe if somebody is willingly living in denial, there isn't much that can be done. Yeah, Maria's got some honesty. If someone's strategy is denial and rejection, how much can we do from the outside? Because the more we're spending time with the denial, the more we're enabling the defense. That's where this meme is really good, but counterintuitive. What is it? If you explore defense, you support defense. If you explore defense, you support defense. If you explore defense, you support defense. If you How does this play out with denial? If you explore denial, if you say denial is bad, you're enabling denial. If you explore defense, you support defense. 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 So if the trickster wants to trick you, it's going to fraud a defense. It's going to own up to denial. And if you explore denial, you support the defense. So the trickster is happy. It did its job. Because if you explore defense, you support defense. 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 And once you explore the defense, bam, you're in Oceanic Union. Oceanic Union. An invitation to dance. You're Oceanic dancing with Union. the defense. An invitation that to dance. That is so sexy. Oceanic Union. An that invitation goes nowhere, to dance. But it's Oceanic so sexy. Union. Oceanic Union. There is no clear sense of where I you am. Get lost and in where the defense. Oceanic Union. There is no clear sense of where I am. You forget and where what's you happening. Are. Oceanic Union. You there fragment. Is no clear sense of where I am. And you where merge you with are. the person's confusion. Oceanic Union. There is no clear sense of where. You can't even spot this thing. Throw anything out there that you'll fight that changes the topic. Throw anything out there that you'll fight. This is a higher topic. level defense. Throw anything out there that you'll denial fight is that easier. Changes the topic. Throw anything out there that you'll fight that changes the topic. Why is denial easier? Denial is easier because of uh, these denials. Nope, you deserved it. Nope, you deserved it. Nope, you deserved it. Nope, nope, matter. Nope, didn't matter. Nope, matter. nope, you deserved it. Matter. Nope, never happened. Nope, 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 n
because their defenses are often trickster energy, which is a way of wanting connection. <laughs> Tricky, yeah. Tricky topic too. Yeah, yeah, maybe, but I, I, I can at least have tried to figure yeah. it out. Denial is also if there's like an, able an, to face. a lack, an inability. Yeah, then I know I can predict. But if there's How can I navigate if I don't have information? I only have this, yeah, I don't know, noise. Why should the trickster care that Chantal gets noise? The trickster probably is happy that Chantal's confused. <laughs> she, she takes uh, stuff from from Google and all kind of rules out of I don't know law books and 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 Bible and and throwing in all these interjections, which are meaningless because she's not backing it up with with, with reality, and that's to me is really disgusting. That's me off and uh. yeah. and it's it's a it's a, a repeating pattern, and I I didn't see any change in that. For, for all these months. There's no change. This is an argument that Chantal's made and Brad made and Pankaj makes. Is that going to appeal to the trickster? <laughs> the goal of the trickster is to not to change. <laughs> Arguing, it might make an argument to the superego. Ali's super ego, but it's not making an argument to the to the stumbling block. Maybe even the trickster can argue, can listen to a rational argument. So if you speak to the trickster in the trickster's words, in trickster supply, it might be it might be willing to to entertain it. But if we're talking to the superego, a toxic superego that's that's reckless, that the trickster doesn't trust. Then we're actually making the trickster mistrust us and mistrust the superego. We're abandoning the inner children of the other person, just like we've abandoned our own inner children. So maybe one part of trickster energy that I'm missing, and maybe that's something that I'm jealous of, is that some tricks, some people have more integrated trickster energy. They can throw a dominant frame, and they can change the energy of the room. This is me working on the air conditioning at my rental property, and then the five-year tenant, he's like a hobosexual since we learned that term from this group. So he's macking on girls, and he's got a woman sleeping over, and his house is a fucking mess, and he's not, it's not his house, and he's still got these getting women. I'm like, how the fuck does this happen? Because <laughs> he's able to, like, project a sugary energy. He's, and he's able to call up girls and, like, have this excited energy, and he's got... He's got that, and he's in, even admitting to like cheating on girls, and he can't help it. And he's still, <laughs> he's got that that tone frame, <laughs> that maybe emotional immaturity, and it might not work on most girls. But since he's just throwing it all over the place, it's going to land on some. And he was a substance abuse counselor, and he said, like, oh, I know how to, I was substance abuse. I know how to disarm people. That's, he's doing it through that dominant frame, through tricking people into falling into his, his, his vibe. He 
You sound it's a, a skill I don't BS. have. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I am. I don't have that skill. I would rather confront. That's the challenge I have with this schizophrenic downstairs person. <laughs> he's breaking rules and destroying my house. I want to confront it. <laughs> I know he's just going to be counterproductive, so I have to try to get it in. A smooth operator, yeah. So back to the case study from November 2022. Yeah, dishonesty is, is really troubling for me. So you're it telling does. me that I'm dishonest. So right there, dishonesty is really triggering to me. Yeah, dishonesty is, is really troubling for me. Why should Holly care? Why should the group care? That's your argument, Chantal, isn't it? Isn't that argument saying dishonesty is triggering to me, someone parent me? I can't control my trigger. Dishonesty is triggering to me. I will act out. I need help. Oh, yeah. I need someone else to change. I need Holly to change. Yeah, That's also, not bad. You're yeah. expressing your need, but is it persuasive? No. And yeah. it's also okay. a cover up because I, I have uh, difficulties with uh, seeing through deception. I have a sort of naivety. Well, you have difficulties and you have past wounds. Yeah. Yeah. Neurotypical society uses a lot of deceptions, and your childhood uses a lot of deceptions, so you have baggage around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But your blind spot is your problem, not mm -hmm. Holly's problem, not the group's. No, but and the group I'm, I'm is giving... an opportunity for you to express your blind spots, express your needs. Mm -hmm. That's true. And then, can we use your trickster energy to? to integrate it with a social mask so that you can meet your needs in shared reality. Yeah, that's where my envy comes from. Like, if I get my... Needs well, your met, envy yeah. is a desire for a potential skill. And since you have envy, maybe there's room for you to grow. Mm -hmm. Or you can destroy the person you're envying. That would be the shortcut. But destroying people is hard in real life, but you can destroy them in your head, I guess. No, Welcome, I, Nick. I'd rather get better Having, at uh, uh, trickster energy. But, which energy? I'd rather get better at trickster energy. Ah, there. Yes, this is tonight. So we're trying to redirect frustration, resentment into trickster energy. That wasn't even the roadmap. So flood the room with resentment and frustration to sort of uh, summon everybody's latent trickster energy and then make an appeal that take this frustration and resentment and make the trickster energy somewhat productive or somewhat creative or somewhat more consciously directed. Because the in-person meeting, I was trying to link trickster energy to passion. And there's some clips where they've linked that trickster archetype is naturally passionate. So people that are living boring, meaningless lives that are depressed, maybe it's their trickster energy isn't conscious, isn't integrated. So it's acting out indirectly. If we can make a plea, give you some options to include your trickster energy more consciously, then you have some expression of the trickster energy and your depression goes down. Isn't having more fun in your life something that would make depression go down? How many people are complaining that their life is too much fun in this group? 
I don't remember that complaint. Maybe we should start a new group of too much fun anonymous or something. That might be a nice contrast. <laughs> There's so much fun in my life, I'm, I can't get anything done. I'm sure there's negatives for people that have too much fun. Maybe they're all type sevens on the Enneagram or something. But they become targets for killjoys. They might have targets of killjoys. Does that be the opposite? Sure. That's my experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So giving voice to the part of yourself that wants joy. Giving space to the part of yourself that wants joy. Integrating that. Getting some agency around that. Would that change the system? Yeah, so you can detect the killjoys sooner and get away from them. Is Go that find a some other friends. Super ego or a trickster mindset? Sounds healthy to me. Does a trickster care about healthiness? I don't think so. If the goal is to play and have fun. Well, this is a hard sale, sell because most of the teachings are directed to superegos. We don't address the teachings to the, to the trickster. We don't recognize the trickster's capacity for ego demolition. We don't recognize the trickster's capacity for humility and destroying the order. So part of the hard part of this persuasive argument, or this, this cell, this pitch, is the superego is going to get reactive to this pitch. Because not only am I uncovering the trickster, I'm trying to appeal to give more power to it. And in some of the videos, argued that the trickster, the id, gets hardwired before the superego. So if your superego part is in control and been ruling, and it gets news that the, the id, the trickster is calling the shots, the superego is not going to be happy. Which is partially my angle of trying to flood frustration and resentment. <laughs> to make the superego unstable. It's a tricky argument. This is just an argument. It's not... I don't have any backing of other people pitching this argument. So there's many ways the superego and any of you guys can dismiss or deny this message. But if there's a part of you that's fighting it a lot, you might be getting close to something. Because <laughs> it's tricky. So you're telling me that I'm dishonest. Yeah. 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 I don't know how to answer that. I really don't. I, but you I don't, don't need know. to somebody, answer it. If it's somebody just were, what I'm explaining. I, That's... Well, I, I can't handle somebody telling me I'm dishonest. Honesty. I can't handle anyone telling me I'm dishonest.
Ali's reveal. I don't think I identify with this stance, so if anyone wants to test it, say I'm dishonest to me, Deef, or tell me I'm dishonest and see if I <laughs> freak out. Deef, you're a liar. Deef, you're being a trickster. Deef, you're distorting stuff. Tell me this stuff. Is that going to make me fall apart? It does when I call you slippery. Is that is that similar? Slippery? Call me slippery. I say slippery. Okay. I just I put do. Deef, you slippery. Uh, I put slipper by accident. You slipper SOB. I didn't yes. really I'm a slippery that. SOB. <laughs> the Am slip I and slide. Your message? The slip and slide kind. Am I changing my behavior because you've caught me out because I'm slippery? Mm hmm. A little. A little. But am I at the same level that Holly is saying dishonesty is like some. <gasps> but it's still triggering you that you don't acknowledge. You. You, you always. I don't acknowledge. I'm. Slippery. Triggered by that, yeah. No. Okay. Well, you do. Okay. We got two people. No, you don't acknowledge that it bothers you, and you were just challenging. Okay, see if it bothers me. I am it putting does effort to you. counter it. You are bothered right now. I made an argument that I thought I made an argument that I'd be crippled by it. Now there's a counter argument that I'm bothered by it. Crippled and bothered is not the same thing in my book. But Sounds like splitting now. I could what be acting fuck? out. What, what, what's with this bar of being crippled? Like, what? What are we? Why? Why put it there? Why am I making a bar between crippled and slippery and bothered? Because <laughs> <clears throat> if it's crippled or not crippled, then you just can have a dominant frame and just block all feedback. And you're the one who made that. Okay, so you're 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 playing devil's advocate, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's working. Well, I think part two or part three. What was part two? Part two was arguing for moving from split to the paradox. So it's not going from one extreme to the other extreme. It's going in the middle. So it's not to say that, oh, everyone should be not bothered, because you can easily do that by just being harder in denial. So I would counter, maybe you could argue on being slippery, that we don't want to be rigid that if someone gives us a negative identification or a definition that we get crippled and over depend, but at the same time that someone gives us some negative feedback, we should have some energy to consider it, which means we're bothered by it. That we're willing to entertain it. I could give context that being slippery is part of Chinese culture. We have to sort of be indirect. It is a muscle I've built. But I think that got triggered by Holly's statement. What was it? I can't handle being called dishonest. I really don't. But you don't, don't need know. to ask it. If it's somebody just were, what I'm explaining. That's... Well, I, I can't handle somebody telling me I'm dishonest. I, I just oh. can't. I just can't well, handle no. it. I can't handle anyone telling me that I'm dishonest. I just can't handle. So then, I invited people to compare it to me, and then I got that I'm slippery, and then I'm bothered by it. Is that? An equivalency or is someone trying to trick me? I 
I will leave it to the group to decide, and you guys can argue back. Holly can't handle being called dishonest. That is being equal to me being called slippery and being bothered by it. Is that an equal comparison? Because talking uh, about the trickster is going to trigger other people's tricksters. Yeah. And I, my answer was time distorted because I, I was thinking about, um, I think it was like October when you um, imploded with the slippery thing. Always hearkening back to that without context now that I think about it. I can also so, so own, I'll also, by the way, own that my trickster is successfully activated. Which is but, the goal of this meeting. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. But that to, to have everything I'm saying dismissed because of that is cheap. Am I doing that? You did. Okay, make an argument. I'm giving you space. How am I fully dismissing it? Who has better verbal skills, me or you? Depends. <laughs> this is a tricky topic. Yes. Yeah, especially when you lob in like all this personal stuff. It's hard not to, yeah. I, it's not really fair, ideally I if think. I could present this in a non-personal way yes I could have used a ideal. trigger warning although maybe this is exactly what you were hoping for I just made, a lie yes, I just opened study. doors congratulations you get to laugh at Ellie's retarded trickster now <laughs> how fun I tried to lay out the Act one that I'm not trying to judge trickster. I have my own trickster parts. Trickster Others are. Uh, Robbie's got his little uh, shit eating grin on there. Like uh, like he's, he's a, a, a pig in the mud. Tricksters are our resilient eating survival parts. Tricksters are our id. Tricksters are our survival instincts. We don't give the mental health in academia is giving too much credit to the superego. The, the trickster in the id is probably what's kept us alive. And it's made our fucked up survival bearable. So the trickster deserves just as much credit, if not more credit, than the superego. Survival mode. Look at Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Well, many, Williams, many, many others. Suicide, Eddie Murphy. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, Eddie Murphy didn't die. Okay. What? Oh, comedians. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So comedians use trickster energy. Yes, they do. So Act Three, we haven't gotten there, but people's intuition is already going there. His way out of the trickster energy is untrickery. I don't want to reveal that early because untrickery is trickery, tricky to untrick the trick, to call out the trick, to recognize the trickery because part of trickster energy is surprise. Part of tri trickster energy is uh, being hiding. So calling out the trickster energy, recognizing it and then not killing it. <laughs> Cunitive superego stuff. I've I that's building feel like trust. I've heard that the integration of the trickster energy, I can't remember where I read it, was like into the hero. So it might be taking all of that movement and resources and direction and trying to focus it into a clear path. At least that's what it sounds like from the archetype movement. 
to the hero. Yeah. Well, it's like if you think about somebody that's a trickster, like you have like your Han Solo or somebody that's like a rogue cowboy that is good, that's being sought out for their skills to be put used to a higher order. That's a movement into hero. That's like the per that person's just hanging around. They're circling. Oh, we tried to cover this in person, but it's a bit slightly different topic. But with the twelve archetypes model, the trickster is part of the belonging structure hmm. and then the the hero is part of the mastery structure hmm. so codependents who have insecure attachment their trickster is trying to manage the belonging That's and the then fish some fish. people will try to go on the hero to try to gain belonging by defeating the danger and then they'll get belonging so the hero is here, and then there's the nice guy here, or the codependent here, and then the the mature nice guy belonging is the trickster jester, and then the mature hero is a magician. Mm. So you are talking about two important tasks. But if someone's focusing too much on results and mastery, it might be a distraction strategy to avoid from the insecurity. Huh. And one of the tricky parts of the insecurity is that in the past, if any sort of bad behavior was judged and deemed socially uh, dangerous it got hammered so your pattern is that any sort of social misstep was danger 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 so then if you have yeah. a social misstep in this group you're going to have a pattern that thinks danger is coming so then having someone reflect non-hammering but staying with you is going to be dissonant. That invalidation is going to have to be somewhat in your face to be with the non-hammering. Because your trickster energy might be trying to invite a rejection to keep the pattern going because the trickster energy is lazy. Maybe. So then maybe the trickster center is lazy, he's got a pattern. It doesn't want to change the fucking predictive map. So it's going to try to trick and sabotage the invalidation, or it's not going to trust it. Which is reasonable. I mean, I can, uh, the trickster energy can't trust any, it, it it's, it's managing the situation. It, it likes its job. So there's a new path. It's going to be distrusting. If people have been scary all your life, this new persuasion is saying, oh, maybe people aren't scary. Maybe there's finally a community where there's some belonging. That's going to be shit tested. That's reasonable. That is the land of water, <laughs> where results and mastery is the land of fire. Huh. So where were we? Holly said that she can't handle dishonesty. Is that it? <laughs> In any way? handle somebody telling me I'm dishonest I, I just oh. can't I just can't well, no. handle it I, you know if I'm and then punk is just like oh, what the fuck 
I don't get it. <laughs> We can't hold space for trickster energy. We can't hold space for people's limitation. We're not, we didn't build that muscle. He's being honest, but this is natural. When we show our trickster side and we share our limits, we share, oh, that's too scary to go to. Most people are going to say, I don't get it. Uh, uh, right now, I have a feeling. If I talk about that feeling, are you going to say, oh, you're dishonest? No. It's like, and I wonder if people are thinking for themselves in this group. That's all I said. And you're saying. That's her redirect to her, her, her early argument. I'm being dishonest because I said that. I don't get that. Can you explain it? How at least confused you guys do need to explain everything. <laughs> do people see the uh, agency redirect? Because Holly is a great example of trickster energy. She shared that she's learned how to skirt around skirt around stuff. i learned to skirt around shit i learned to skirt around shit i learned to skirt around shit she's frustrated us so she's a great case study of trickster energy there's no proof that i wasn't telling the truth there's no proof that i wasn't telling the truth there's no proof that i wasn't telling the truth I'm the one who's wrong, right? I'm the one who's wrong, right? I'm the one who's wrong, right? Your trickster energy is like amazing. I mean, this is a skill I envy. What? This is a skill that stops my punitive superego. I don't know how to match it. So if we can honor this energy, stop trying to fight one side of ourselves with another side of ourselves. Try to feed this part of ourselves that wants some sort of play and fun. Maybe that's uh, an alternative. Saying, I'm being dishonest. Because I said that. I don't get that. Can you explain it? Because she it. thinks that you don't think for yourself. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, yeah. you know. Okay, so, so, um, because I don't think for myself, then who's thinking for me? <laughs> wow. That's how good she's at pivoting. That's how good she's at skirting around stuff. Because <laughs> it's the trickster and the counter will in the schizoid parts of ourselves. It's good at pivoting. These are survival instincts to get you out of a jam. These are, and some people who grew up at, grew up with that in their childhood, they're going to be faster. They built a bigger muscle to, to just pivot, to redirect, to not get trapped. And the more you're trying to get them to be seen, you're thinking you're getting, getting them to be seen, so there's a bridge. They're feeling like they're getting trapped. And the more they cry, they're, I'm feeling trapped, I'm feeling trapped. The more you're going to push to try to get them to be seen. And the more you push to them to get them to be seen, the more their survival instinct is like, I don't want to get trapped. So they're going to get more extreme with their trickster tactics. 
and they're going to validate their story that people are unsafe. So you have to untrick the trick. Act 3, I haven't figured that, that out yet. I am working on my hobosexual skills. Or substance abuse skills. It is. I didn't get muscle on that. But I, I am envious, therefore maybe I can build towards it. Yeah, and if you say good. Google, you just can't, uh, sorry, because, you know, you can find anything that agrees with you out there somewhere. So anybody can do that. I can't handle somebody telling me I'm dishonest. I mean, I don't have all the answers. I'm not, comp I'm not professing to have all the answers. I was saying I relate to Ellie, and this is how I relate. And that's what I put out there, and somehow that triggered you. Somehow that triggered you. So she's able to reframe the argument and dump it back on the Chantal. Because her trickster energy is good. And punitive superegos are a bit grandiose thinking that I crushed my inner child. I crushed my trickster energy, so I can crush other people's trickster energy. Where's the evidence? If there is evidence that superegos could crush uh, people's trickster energies, then why would there be so many therapies and so many courses to try to keep training these methods, if it was that easy to use superego injunctions to get people to fit into healthiness. We have tons of protocols to try to force people to be healthy. This is the model. These are the problems. These are the diagnoses. These are the stigmas. These are the medications. Let's impose on you healthiness. No, that's not what was the trigger. I'm not saying I'm innocent. I don't understand how you can say I'm being dishonest. And I don't know what to say to you're being dishonest. You're Holly doesn't know how to respond to I'm being dishonest, or you're being dishonest, and she doesn't know what to say back to her. You're being dishonest. You're, you're lying. I don't know what to say to that. If she's uncomfortable that she doesn't know what to say to I'm being, being charged with being dishonest, is that your responsibility, responsibility, Chantal, for calling out and giving her a situation that she doesn't know how to respond to? But does it feel like your responsibility when she's using God voice tone and, and yeah. moral outreach? <clears throat> too? I need to play her a parent. Yeah, that's the transference. Transference is tricky, but transference and projective identification are big jargony concepts. Maybe recognizing that we're working with trickster energy might make it a bit easier to spot in real time. Because the trickster energy might be the part of ourselves that leaks out the desire for connection. The superego part's going to be rejecting. The superego part's going to be setting demands, going to be defining shit. But the trickster part What's the play? And what's wrong with a part that wants to play? Can we use some creative energy to play with the part that wants to play? Bam! Steve Oscar joins.
This whole meeting has been waiting for Steve Oscar. <laughs> Welcome, Steve. <laughs> Welcome, Steve. Hi, Hi, everyone. Hi, Robbie. Hi, Dave. Welcome, welcome. We're talking trickster energy. You can catch up in the, the archive. Yeah. We haven't used much video clips. We're just using a case study from November 20, 2022, where Chantal went out on, went postal on Holly's uh, religious injunctions. <laughs> <laughs> and then Holly made a distinction between dishonesty and denial and dishonesty was a crippling label <laughs> that her trickster part tried to redirect to denial on something else and our super egos followed the, the redirection uh, the redirection from the trickster? Redirection from dishonesty to denial, to the reframe of denial, and also the redirection of agency that Holly is confused, therefore somebody else needs to explain. Oh. Or Holly is playing dumb, which is also a trickster strategy. Mm. Somebody else needs to play the parent. It's very tricky. You're being dishonest. You're lying. I don't know what to say to that. I really don't. Maybe you don't need to say anything. But just think about it. <laughs> That's good. That's honest. I use that in person. Yeah. And look if you can make an adjustment or not. If I feel like I'm in my authenticity, why would I make an adjustment? Ha ha! <laughs> she leaked out this logic. If I feel it's congruent, why should I change? If I feel comfortable with the status quo, why should I change? Because that's why we have community. That's why you have other people, because sometimes we can self-delude ourselves. If I feel comfortable in my power, maybe it's my superego that's just convincing me and happy. So that doesn't mean my superego knows what's going on with other people in my social landscape. If we let our superego just say, oh, that's fine. Good inner children, shut the fuck up. Is that a good heads up for the real world? That the superego is pacified? Is that good preparation for social competition? Is that good preparation for other people that that are gaming for social space or gaming for social thing that your punitive superego is satisfied? Because the trickster parts and like inner children are silent. That it found it skirting around the issue is that Oh, it's done. I learned to skirt around shit. I learned to skirt around shit. I learned to skirt around shit. Is that what Holly's arguing arguing for here? I just think about it. Yeah. And look if you can make an adjustment. So Chantal saying, Oh, is there space for you to consider it? And if you consider it, then you can consider making an adjustment. What does Holly respond? I'm not. If I feel like I'm in my authenticity, why would I make an adjustment? Holly responded with more denial. 
She said she's stuck in denial, and she's consistent. Why are you not seeing her denial, Chantal? <clears throat> Why do we, with punitive superegos, not give space for other people's denial? Or at least address the denial and mention maybe the consequences, maybe make a plea that if they drop their denial, there's some sort of positive alternative. But just denying the denial enables it, usually. Or you're getting contagion, transference. Or you're feeling their denial and you're getting the voice, so you're going to try to deny them by not seeing them. This territory is tricky. I think it's more lost what you're just saying. Like, I feel the devoicing through mm -hmm. that denial. Through her rejection and denial, you feel divorced. Yes. She's dismissing you. Yeah. So then you want to dismiss her back. Yeah. And then if you dismiss her back, then she can say you're dismissing you, her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, this is a stupid game. Yeah, so you no. fell right in. You fell right it's in. It's gravity. It's fell... supposed to be a game. Yeah, but this it's is boring. It's a safe way of connection. But it's so boring. Ugh. Not to them. It's not boring. It's boring to your punitive superego. It's not boring to your trickster. It is an invitation for your trickster to meet their trickster. This is a very hard sell. I'm sure it's triggering most people in the room. That's why I drank tequila with Pepsi. But now there's less tequila. I can switch to kombucha. Is anyone complaining about my drinks on Discord? Actually, no it's more. not triggering. I don't know. It's triggering my envy. I want to. Well, that's a trigger. I want to play. Isn't your trigger? Isn't triggering envy an equal trigger? Yeah, yeah, but it, then it triggers my super ego, not my trickster. Yeah. This is oh. going to trigger people's super ego because mm. that's what society is saying how we, we should manage our lives. But the oh, littles yeah. want to come out and play. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I can sense that. The, the trickster littles want to come because out. Because a trickster is able to fight for space. Yeah. The other littles don't know how to fight for space. Yeah. Totally makes sense. So if I'm making a plea that wakes up and inspires your trickster and your littles, that's going to trigger your, your super ego. Yeah. Yeah. If I make a plea that self-deception is bad, and here's 10 steps to manage yourself so you don't self-deceive, your superego is going to say, yay, thank you for all these rules to hate myself. That would be the safer presentation. That would be the safer theme. For some reason, I'm crazy. Or chose this, I don't know. That inspired. I blame it on Holly. But since she's not here, I can't blame too strongly on Holly. Holly is my inspiration of trickster energy. Your arch nemesis. Well, no, my 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 beneficial Jeez. adversary. She yeah. is the one teaching me. Someone who's wielding this skirting energy way better than me. I learned to skirt around shit. I learned to skirt around shit. I learned to skirt around shit. Can I upgrade my shit. slipperiness into skirting? <laughs> There's always room for improvement. Uh -huh. 
could be bullshitting to yourself. That's, yeah. that's, if I'm that's bullshitting to myself, then it's called denial. And you're not helping me to get out of it if that's where I am. <laughs> if I'm bullshitting to myself, it's called den denial. <laughs> and you guys aren't helping me out of denial. <laughs> How much can somebody else help someone out of denial? <laughs> <laughs> What a false blaming. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> that is so fast. That is good. Okay. Kelly's surprise. <laughs> Pankaj isn't frozen. Let's see what he says back. <laughs> with this negative attitude. With this ah, then she's laying it on. You guys have a negative attitude. How dare you? You should be more positive. This nastiness. You guys are being nasty. It's all you guys are nasty. With this attack. Oh, you. You guys are attacking. Oh, Pankaj has an answer. Once well, he's just going to deny her. <laughs> Fight denial with denial. The first denial person wins. <laughs> You're the one who's nasty. See? <laughs> He's just fighting denial of den denial. Will it work? You see, this is what you don't see. This is your blind I'm state. defending myself. And I'm going to cut this because I'm tired of defending myself. You know, I'm defending myself because I'm tired of defending myself. What was the part in the middle? Because I'm tired of defending myself. What was the logic? I'm defending myself, and I'm going to cut this because I'm tired of defending myself. And I'm going to compass or what? cut this. I think I'm going to cut this because I'm tired of defending myself. Mm -hmm. How is she going to be able to cut a group conversation because she's tired of defending herself? You don't just don't want to be here at all. What I don't want to be here. What you're doing is you're putting yourself into the gutter. You think it's defense. You see, this is how blind you are. I can't handle somebody telling me I'm dishonest. Yeah, you're hiding again. I, I'm being put again. up against the wall again. I'm being pushed up against the wall. You played into her transference. She induced you guys to put her up against a wall. Now she can say, this is my childhood wound. I've been put up against the wall. You guys are recreating my childhood. Trickster energy, is that good? This is this happens so fast. In real time, you don't have time to track this. She put up a she's put up against the wall. Or she feels her flashback. And how does that feel? Okay, that's pretty good. What feelings are coming up towards me? Not comfortable. <laughs> Not comfortable. <laughs> 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 Maria laughs. That's honest. That's all. See? You're that feeling is uncomfortable. Is it? <laughs> is it? That's a good question. Since this was a long back and forth, I think people are tired. They're going to accept it. Yeah. But it's probably a half truth. She likes the chaos. Uh, she gets energy from it. So. Part yeah, of her she likes earlier it. explained that when Brett puts her against the wall, she loves it. She gets a lot of mm -hmm. energy from that. But she in might that be in the spotlight. Yeah, part that of situation. her that, mm -hmm. that wants to control this situation, the trickster or some inner child, likes being center of attention. The punitive superego might be threatened. Part of her really enjoys it. That's reasonable. 
That's why her and Brad went back and forth so much. Well, it's two different triggers that that weren't satisfied. Brad's trigger and Holly's trigger. Brad wanted Holly to fit into a certain box. Yeah, and Holly he tried enjoyed to put her resisting. Into a frame. He put her tried to put her in a frame. And she wouldn't go. So Holly <laughs> tried to put Brad in a frame, and then Brad didn't. Brad didn't go, and then this was a meeting after Brad left. Yeah. It was free game to define Brad. Holly's on Discord. Or online Discord. <laughs> what are we on time? 9.05. We didn't even cover the bipolar boulder splits. Uh, what is Act 3? Untrickery. We can't cover any of this stuff. Mm. Okay, the teaser. Untrickery. This is how it works with uh, DID people or fragmented people. You trick yourself. The whole thing is just kind of a mental mechanism for surviving. You trick yourself in what otherwise would be completely unsurvivable. You trick yourself. In... There's something to the idea that multiple personalities are trick. The trick you play <coughs> yourself. You trick yourself into thinking something didn't happen, and then you forget all about it, and you don't even, you're not even aware of it anymore. You trick yourself, in... and it helps you survive to be able to do that. You trick yourself, in... and the... You trick yourself that something didn't happen. Something didn't happen. I guess didn't is the key word. The downside of tricking yourself that something didn't happen is you have to continually do this. So it is a lifetime job. And then sometimes you need to coerce and persuade other people to join you in tricking yourself that something didn't happen. And if you have extreme fragmented uh, DID type dissociation, your, your manager parts have dissociative amnesia, so it doesn't remember your fragmented parts which are holding the trauma. So when you get flooded by the memory, the emotional flashback, the, the part that's holding the trauma takes over the system, and the managing part is, has a dissociative wall. Welcome, Michael. Five to be able to do that. You trick yourself, and the therapy you have to untrick yourself, which means you have to face the things that you that you otherwise were were not able to survive. You trick yourself into thinking something didn't happen. You're not even aware of it anymore. You have to untrick yourself, which means you have to face the things that you were not able to survive. To untrick yourself, to untrick yourself with someone who has. So how do you untrick yourself? You face yourself that you weren't able to survive. You, you have a simulation of a similar potential relationship rupture and it invalidates the pattern. But if you have a rigid trickery part that wants to validate the pattern, it's going to shit test and try to force the new situation into rejection. You have to untrick yourself. How do you have to untrick yourself? You trick yourself into thinking something didn't happen. You're not even aware of it anymore. You have to untrick yourself, which means you have to face the things that you were not able to survive. To untrick yourself, to untrick yourself. You have to face the things you weren't able to survive. Is this connecting to our uh, PTSD 
where you have to face your frozen trauma, where if your your tongue is stuck on a metal pole and it's frozen, you don't feel anything. There's going to be a giant amount of pain when you start refilling your feelings. So unnumbing yourself is going to be giantly painful. And then you can get to back to nervous system function. So it's very easy for people to mistake the unfreezing as danger. Who's willing to stay with you when you unfreeze and you start freaking out like it's happening again? What codependent isn't going to rescue and enable you and send you back into freezing? Who's going to love you through the pain? Who's going to love you for your long-term good versus a short-term freakout? Who's going to care for you? Care for all parts of you instead of just the one loud voice? It's tricky. It's hard. Someone who has for you an embracing love it destabilizes the multiplicity. The greatest panic she's ever felt in her whole life. The altars were so frightened, they felt like they had been confronted by the ultimate threat to their existence. It destabilizes. What is the ultimate threat to a system of altars, of fragmented memories? The multiplicity, the deadliest threat of all. And what they wanted to do is run to the far corners of the universe. To get as far away from it as possible. It was the word love to untrick yourself. Love threatens the stability of a system of multiple altars. Love. Love is what's threatening. What part of love? Probably the spectrum of intimacy and ludus. Agape and playfulness, because playfulness is going to be it's safe enough to play, and then there's surrender. Intimacy feels dangerous. Your beingness and me starts coming together, and that's always been punished as a child. So someone that's inviting attachment in your meanness to come out in space is threatening. And if you think about it, it's right. It has to be the preservation of a stable system of alternative selves is kind of based on a despairing premise that you can't trust anyone in this world. You can't trust anyone in this world. The fragmentation has a premise that people aren't trustworthy. I must game the system. I must game control because I can't surrender to anybody. Surrender has always been dangerous. Agape doesn't exist. Shared humanity is not safe. Secure attachment. Fuck that. It's only insecure. So. I don't trust it. If I don't trust secure attachment and intimacy, then there's no playfulness. And there's no playfulness in an intimacy, then playfulness gets acted out with a trick trickery archetype that fragments memories. Because all of us have a ludus. that wants to play. And the fragmented parts, the people with fragments, emotional flashbacks, your trickery part, is tricking you to separate your memories, to reinforce that surrender is dangerous. Agape doesn't exist. Secure attachment cannot exist. Do not trust it. Secure attachment is paranoia, 
that person or anybody who's feigning secure attachment can turn into a demon. And if they don't, I will make them. Because my playful ludus is that good to trick other people into turning into demons. Welcome, Jeff. We're finishing up the formal session of untrickery. And you have to handle it by yourself, and you do so by having this little community of altars that split up the different things that have happened to you. But when you come into a relationship with someone who has for you an embracing love, it destabilizes the multiplicity. It brings out the suffering and the pain and the trauma, and the, pa the patient is going to come together. So the, the greatest... There! You have someone that loves you is going to bring out the... It brings out the suffering and the pain and the trauma. So if you have someone that loves you is going to bring out the suffering and the trauma, it might be easy to link that person as the source of grief and throw all your anger at the person that's loving you. Because it's urgent. No one's been trustworthy. So you need a hobosexual who has the perfect language to navigate this, this, this dangerous territory. And the, and the patient's going to come together. So the, the greatest threat to, to the stability of a person with m multiple personality definitely is love. More trauma is not a threat at all. Like you might, you might have thought, well, no, the greatest threat to them would be a repetition this of their horrible good. traumas. That's not right. They are geniuses of mastering trauma. Like if you just sadistically rape a multiple, she's going to have no problem. She's been, she's been for years worked out a way to handle anything like that. So this is my frustration with John. I can try to do hits and he just bounces off of them because his defenses are comfortable with trauma. Additional rape and whatever violation he can handle, so I can't deliver anything that's going to match that. I can't get his attention. Maybe through love, so now I have to figure out how to have to destabilize them through love, but through trauma doesn't work. Rape a multiple. She's gonna have no problem. She's been she's been for years worked out a way to handle anything like that. Atrocious attack, she's an expert at handling. What it can't handle is love itself. But when you come into a relationship with someone who has for you an embracing love, it destabilizes the multiplicity to untrick yourself. Love threatens to untrick yourself with love itself. This is, I'm envious to the skill because it's not something my family modeled, but I can see the, the rental property tenant. He's modeling this sort of unconditional love with sugary energy. And I can feel that's disarming. It's not a muscle I built. This sort of disarming, unconditional love. I will try to work on this way of untrickery. And maybe this is what it looks like when people finally wake up from their dream. It's just gone. Poof. It's history. She knows what happened to her. She chooses not to give it much thought. And that's what happens with dissociated trauma. Once you've contacted and feel all the feelings that weren't allowed to happen in the first place, you don't have to be captive to it anymore, and you can leave it behind. You don't leave it behind by pretending it's not there. You know it's there. You leave it behind because you don't have to be spending all your time anymore in these terrible down places. Sybil has the same story. And Sybil also didn't go back. And, and, and they're, they're all like that. And it's, it's like a, 
wonderful example of what is possible in psychotherapy. And I think the movie Sybil, I think of it as the best film there is on, on what psychotherapy can do. And it's in a way, it's the universal story. Like in, in one way, it's a story of multiplicity and extreme trauma. Not everybody has that story. Generally, people who are entering psychotherapy have something that's happened or a series of things that have happened. And then they've dealt with whatever it is that has happened in a certain way that has been their undoing and downfall later in life. And so you go to therapy and you talk about what happened to you originally, maybe relive it if there's trauma and dissociation, and then maybe undo the way that you have learned to deal with it that has become destructive to you. In real undo. broad brush strokes, I think the story of Sybil is a story of every psychotherapy. My psychotherapy was like that. And maybe yours it has been or will be, if, if you're lucky, and have a good person to help you understand and make sense of your own situation. It's just gone. Poof. It's history. It dissolves or disintegrates. You wake up from the dream. But the dream is a living nightmare. So Until you're fully awake, that transition period can be a bit destabilizing. Nine twenty. That's where if you can have a co-historian or a community that can sort of remind you, like, stay at it. I see there's progress. Relax into the trip. But it's scary and tricky. I haven't mapped out the untrickery part. We don't really cover the trickster archetype that much, specifically. It's a bit late to cover now at the end. Though maybe it might make sense at the end. Hmm. Okay, we'll try it. Tricksters are the breakers of rules, agents of mischief, masters of deceit, and boundary crossers. The best way to describe Trickster is to say simply that the boundary is where he will be found, sometimes drawing the line, sometimes crossing it, sometimes erasing or moving it, but always there, the guard of the threshold in all its forms. So if you have all these boundary teachings, Boundaries, the distance that I can love me and you simultaneously. Codependency is a state of being broken boundaries, highly... Boundaries are the realization where I stop and you begin. I st so all these superego injunctions about boundaries might be a message that your trickster energy is exiled. If your trickster hangs out in the boundaries and you don't know what boundaries are, then your trickster might be distracted by trying to fragment memories or some, something else. Trickster might be the energy of liminal space. Tricksters are always on the road. They are the lords of in-between, always evasive always crossing our conceptual boundaries of definition in which we try to confine him. Trickster rises against the restrictions and authorities, just like the id, the unconscious instinctual component that is present at birth, the source of instant gratification that is in constant conflict with the superego, the internalization of cultural rules which helps us act in socially acceptable ways. Tricksters usually have an enormous libido and often present scatological themes. So if your trickster energy is just a relabel or an early version of your libido, of your id, and it's an ideal energy that goes against your superego or keeps your superego in check, then what's the best mechanism to, to counter a 
hijacked superego. Your trickster energy. What's the best way to keep yourself a slave? By judging your trickster energy. By keeping it in the shadows. This um this argument is um, sitting well with me in this moment. Um, after having just felt my trickster energy and expressed it a little bit, um, because it what triggered it was uh, a feeling my boundaries crossed by some of the statements you were making earlier in the meeting. In the, it is a boundary master. Yeah. So this is making sense. That is the plea, that if this argument can connect to your deep parts, maybe somehow that lubricates or connects, integrates some things that's naturally there instead of enabling the superego. But now I'm angry with you for having done that and I don't know what to do that anger at all or i don't i don't know how passion to, how to, that's another issue i know what is but. wrong with passion you just need to direct it into lust and desire and mania or See, that's more ludus. boundary crossing for you to say that right now that's so rude <laughs> can you stop I, i'm i'm gonna stop That's setting boundaries. Okay. For me, the way it landed. God, sorry, sorry, I was listening. I'll I'll post them like a so you can see it. It was like prayer hands, which was like to trust, like energy coming in, the way you're saying it, the way it's landing, to trust. Or there was a there's like there was. To block it as well. To block it. Mm -hmm. There's very prayer and there's a blocking energy. Yeah. <clears throat> this might be slippery, or people could argue this is slippery, but I would counter that this is sort of taking the split into the paradox. One part of you is going to reject it, and another part of you is going to want to receive it. And if you're able to hold both of those, that's evidence that you're holding more of the paradox. My argument, you can deny it, block it, whatever. It's just one perspective. So this eternalized video is arguing that it is linked to, or the trickster is linked to the id, which is pure libido and life force. Which helps us act in socially acceptable ways. Tricksters usually have an enormous libido and often present scatological themes. An early and innocent form of trickster is parents playing peekaboo with their children to make them laugh. This was in the video after I labeled Holly's peekaboo and after uh, John Bradshaw's peekaboo commentary about the two-year-old or six to 18 months. So peekaboo might be an early form of denial where children thought that the world doesn't exist by closing their eyes. Uh, some people are stuck in this form of denial where they think that other people and things disappear by just blocking So if somebody's playing peekaboo with you, this might be their two-year-old trying to reach out to you. And if you judge it with punitive superego, you're rejecting this very infantile regress part that's trying to connect. 
trickster comes to us when we are too serious, rigid, when we follow rules and schedules, and when we lack a sense of humor. He causes us to forget what we intended to remember. His energy sweeps in and delivers hard knocks in an attempt to wake us up as individuals and as a culture. He steps in and points things out, asking a culture to look at its own folly, addressing hard topics with wit and humor, shining a light into shadowy areas and bring public attention to the underbelly of society. Trickster possesses no values, moral or social, is at the mercy of his passions and appetites, yet through his actions all values come into being. His creative cleverness amazes So this is an interesting argument for theory, but the trickster is amoral, so it's not immoral or moral, it's in the middle. But the trickster is where all values come from. Because if the trickster is a key to your life force when you have judgments or reaction to stuff, it's guiding what you value. His creative cleverness amazes us and keeps alive the possibility of transcending the social restrictions. Trickster is important in individuation. Oh. All values, moral or social, is at the mercy of his passions and appetites. Yet through his actions, all values come into being. So if you're pulled or rejecting something, if you're being drawn by your attention through the trickster, that's telling you what you value and how much can you control your value system. If the trickster is the key to your passion, then the trickster could be defining your values. His creative cleverness amazes us and keeps alive the possibility of transcending the social restrictions. Trickster is important in individuation because he helps deflate ego inflation when we become controlling, arrogant or narcissistic. The healthy ego is our sense of who we are, serving as a bridge to the inner world. The trickster is the ego demolitions expert who helps us become more realistic about our psychological limitations and ultimately our spiritual limitlessness. This is an energy within ourselves and within the universe that humbles us. So instead of taking a mushroom trip, you could be aware of your trickster and other people's trickster. And then this is an ego demolition expert. You don't need to go to churches and get giant awe and reverence. You can just recognize your trickster and other people's tricksters and see ego demolition, humility, limitation. Us troubles our ego, upsets our plans, demonstrates to us how little our wishes matter, and dissolves the forms that no longer serve us, and as we start to see So this is maybe the best adversary for uh, a rigid toxic superego, a good counterbalance. The trickster out of control is also too bad, or couldn't be too dangerous, so you need a punitive superego or a moral something to counterbalance it. And then when the moral superego gets out of control, the, the trickster will counter it. So then it can be balanced, so you can find something in the middle. No longer serve us. And as we start to see the reality of things, everything that we thought to be meaningful, power, money, fame, pleasure, becomes meaningless. Trickster helps to humble us down and tells us that our power is limited in the vast universe. This surrender is a necessity for self-realization and a connection with the divine. And a doorway to enthusiasm divine. Nine thirty.
move. How do we close this out? Anyone not triggered? Adults don't exist. This came up in my YouTube feed as a short, but YouTube has changed the algorithms for downloading things. So I had to screen capture this. So since I spent so much work to screen capture it, I'll try to make it fit. Adults don't exist. There's kind of two red pills that make you realize that adults don't exist. So the first one is when you go to college or university and one of your friends or people that you know who's just so all over the place unintentional hungover all the time doesn't know what they want to do with their life and they go thinking of becoming a teacher and you go hold on <laughs> well, all my teachers are that person who just didn't know what they wanted to do and i put them on this pedestal so it's this kind of low agency mindset of thinking that there's these emperors out there that are wearing these beautiful clothes and there's these CEOs, there's these politicians. But actually, the more high agency perspective is realizing that they're just grown up children. And the other realization you have is when you're. So, low agency mindset, you project authority on certain people. And then when you see behind the curtains, oh fuck, they're more clueless or grown up uh, children. And then the world seems scary. 15, you meet like a 25 year old. Oh, the second part of the red pill, she's when you're meeting someone 15, then you meet a 25 year old. Is when you're 15, you meet like a 25 year old. You go, wow, her 25, that's like old. That's an adult. And you, you become 25 and you go, I still don't. When am I going to become an adult? When am I going to become an adult? And you realize, oh, 30 is the same, and I think it'll just be the same all the way throughout. So there's, these adults just don't exist. Adulthood is like being pushed down a set of stairs at age 18 and trying to catch your feet until you die. This is a decent metaphor. So if adulthood is, adulthood is like this falling down stairs and just adapting. What is good adulthood or what is graceful adult, adulthood? stairs at age 18 and trying to catch your feet until you die just permanently building it as you go like oh fuck we're in the air like all right we put a wing on the plane and let's get a propeller and let's do this thing mm. so the part of us ourselves that can adapt on the fly is that more your trickster part or is that more your super ego part which part is going to be able to put on a wing and propeller and fix stuff that's falling apart on the fly. With no history, no prescripts. And then someone who's followed the path of mastery would go from warrior to outlaw to magician. And magician and the trickster are the the first two cards in the the tarot. Trickster zero, magician one. The two shapeshifters, the two main shape shapeshifters. I didn't go through all the tarot cards. We'll end with that. Ever be here, ever be here, that's all, folks. <laughs>